Hi, my name's Emma, and I'm a huge book nerd. And this is Devin. Hi! You want to tell them your social media so they can go follow you? Oh yeah, on Instagram, I'm Little Miss Dev. D-E-V. Today we're going to do the first video in a series talking about all of the Harry Potter books. And we are going to start by talking about book one, the Sorcerer's Stone or the Philosopher's Stone, depending on which country you have this book from. So we're going to go chapter by chapter and talk about, obviously, each chapter as they come. We could spend an hour, I look at my hair type, we could spend like an hour talking about maybe like two sentences. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna try and abbreviate this yeah. for you. Chapter one, the boy who lived. This is the chapter where we meet Dumbledore and um, McGonagall, McGonagall and, and Hagrid. Hagrid all for the first time. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on the first meeting of the three of them? I just love that it's like, it's a normal neighborhood in England and all of a sudden it's just like, oh yeah, there's like a cat that turned into a person and this really giant guy and like this really really old man mm -hmm. and she's like oh yeah just chill like hey guys like see you there like it's late at night it's, yeah it's it's brilliantly out of place which i think works really well i love the first sentence it's mr and mrs dursley of number four privet drive we're proud to say that they were perfectly normal thank you very much and i just think that's brilliant and then i also love how you were saying that like Dumbledore and McGonagall and Hagrid are so out of place in this neighborhood. I think it's really interesting that this first part of this chapter is from Mr. Dursley's perspective. So we right. see him like going about his normal day and like seeing all these weird things and being like, what's going on? And like, right, exactly. As a reader reading this for the first time, if you don't know anything about the story, you wouldn't like, you would have no idea that this is about wizards. And we don't get that until. Dumbledore and Minerva and Hagrid and then we're kind of like, what is going on? Like, what exactly. is this thing about? Like, is there anyone wandering around being like, Harry Potter, I wonder what that's <laughs> about. I guess I should probably say that this is not going to be spoiler free. So if you oh, haven't yeah. read the first book, bye. And then like, if you continue to watch the series, like, yeah. bye, you gotta get, you gotta get on that, read those books. Yes. But like, just Dudley Dursley is Dudley such Dursley. a good name. It's just such a good And Minerva McGonagall, oh, like, I just love all the alliteration. Does Hagrid have a last name, or is it just Hagrid? It's Ruby is Hagrid. Name. That took, I, duh! Should've had a V8. <laughs> okay. Chapter two. The Vanishing Glass. The Vanishing Glass is where we first meet the Dursleys as they are now, so like, 10 years into Harry's life. Right, and we meet Harry, really. Right, and not as yes. a baby. <laughs> yes, and we learn that he lives in a cupboard under the stairs. Which is sad and Don't also do that like your children. iconic. The the contrast between Harry and Dudley even is so funny. How many presents does Dudley? Thirty six. Thirty six. We count. We, <laughs> we should not. We counted. We count. Yeah, there's an illustration of the presents, <laughs> and we counted all thirty six. That's not even thirty six right lie. there. That's like. 12. He's really disappointed this year. But yeah, you're right. The contrast between Harry and Dudley is really interesting because Harry's like really small and skinny. Yeah, very skinny, like lives under the stairs. And yeah, fine. And there's like spiders everywhere in his He's chilling. Yeah. He's just chilling with the spiders. Mm -hmm. And then Dudley's like huge and round and. I need all the presents. Yes, just like that. You should play him in the new movie. Okay. Booked it. <laughs> This is also the chapter where the glass breaks and he's talking to a snake and we haven't even gotten to any of the parcel tongue stuff yet. Yeah, at yeah. At all. Also, one time my family went to a zoo and I tried to talk to a snake through a oh glass. And I was, you. and I think I was just saying something that I had heard like from the movie or something. And one of the snakes turns, turned its head at me and I was like, wow, that's <gasps> it. I'm Timon. Harry Potter. But you don't have any Slytherin in you, do you? We'll talk about we'll that later. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> it's so interesting. He like is so excited about going to the zoo because he never goes anywhere but school and home. And home. Exactly. Yeah. Which is sad. It's so sad. Chapter three! 
The letters from no one. So this chapter is where the letters from Hogwarts start arriving, obviously. And let me just say, it's the most frustrating thing when Harry doesn't open the letter in the hallway. And yeah. It's like, like, what was he expecting? He knows his family is like the literal worst. The textbook definition of the literal worst. If you open up a dictionary and look at the literal worst. The picture is of the Dursley, the Dursley family. family. Yes. Minus Harry. Yes. I just love that the letters never stop arriving. I mean, I'm sure everyone loves that. Can you just imagine your phone being filled with envelopes? Well, you know what? That never happened. Eleven has long since come and gone. We're True. still waiting. Are you sure you're not 10 years old, Devin? I mean, you're I, pretty small. I am pretty small. Okay. <laughs> and then eventually we have Mr. Dursley going on this, this absolutely ridiculous journey where he's taking his family to somewhere in the middle of nowhere oh, trying nowhere. to escape these like, letters. Like there's, it's the ocean or something. There's so much water. It's like what? Yeah. What length will you stop? Yeah, I love. Like, I also love when Dudley is like, Daddy's gone mad, hasn't he? <laughs> Dudley asks Petunia dully. Like I just think it's so funny, <laughs> especially because it says he says it dully. Like he's just like dully. Daddy's gone, gone mad, mad, hasn't he? <laughs> just classic Dudley. Classic. Chapter four. The Keeper of the Keys. This is when we re-meet Hagrid. Yes. Like, more officially this time. Mm -hmm. yeah, this scene is so much better in the book than it is in the movie. It's true. Opinion. I would agree. Yeah, because Hagrid gets so much angrier in the book than he does in the movie. In the movies, he's, he's just like, Dursley, you idiot! But like... Right, he's more of a teddy bear, I feel like, in the movies. Which is not, like, the most horrible choice. Because, yeah. I mean, he is he is a nice guy. You know what's interesting is that in the book, he can spell Happy Birthday Harry on the cake. And in the movie, they, like, dumped him down so he can't spell it. Is that really true? Yeah. He writes Happy Birthday Harry. I also love that he pulls out, like, a copper kettle, a package of sausages, a poker, a teapot, several chipped mugs, and a bottle of some amber liquid. He just, like, has all this in his pocket. He's like, ah, oh, yes, let me just... Yeah. And the pink umbrella. That's fantastic. I also love when he tries to turn Dudley into a pig. <laughs> Does not go well, but yeah. I mean... It's an just accurate fun. representation of Dudley Dursley. Yeah, I, he actually says, Shouldn't have lost me temper, but it didn't work anyway. Meant to turn him into a pig, but I suppose he was so much, much like, like a pig anyway, there wasn't much left to do. Yeah. I never realized that Uncle Vernon said, yeah. I'm not paying for some crackpot old fool to teach him magic tricks. Yep. Crack and I just... I mean, I also love that Hagrid doesn't attack until Mr. Dursley insults Dumbledore, and then which he's like, and then no, he, no, he said, mm -mm, he that's said, my man, mm -mm. that's my main homeboy. Chapter five, Diagon Alley. I love this chapter. This chapter is a oh, stuff of dreams. It is. This just makes me the. It, this is like candy to me. Like I just. Something about imagining. It, it's candy wolf. Okay, I love. We both really enjoy back to school shopping, and this is back to school shopping like on crack. Mm-hmm. Because mm -hmm. they give you the list. They give you the list of everything. Uniform. First year students will require three sets of plain work robes, black. And it's like it's a list. I like <laughs> lists. And it's a magical list, which is even more exciting. You can't get this stuff at office, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> but let's just talk about the world building in general yes. for this chapter. Yes. First of all, look, look at this picture. This beautiful image. Oh. I'd like to thank the illustrator. For uh, that. The illustrator is Jim, Jim K. Kay. <sighs> the world building is just incredible because we haven't even gotten to Hogwarts yet. This is just Diagon Alley. But like, what I like about the book as opposed to the movie, because movie you just take it all in, it's all there for you, but you have so much room to imagine Diagon Alley when you read the book. Oh yeah. And it's just a beautiful place. Yeah, I also love, this is the chapter where Harry is first introduced to the wizarding world and everyone's right. like, oh my god, Harry Potter, and they're Harry all like Potter, shaking his like, hand. I'm <laughs> Yeah, and this is also where we meet Quirrell for the first time. And he's like all like nervous and, and stuttery. And awkward. I wonder if he was always stuttery, or it didn't happen until Voldemort cool. possessed him. That they would say be that, interesting. They say that he was fine until he went on his like year-long... His year-long thing, which makes me think that it was probably... Yeah, we that told would make this sense. Would be 
Yes, well. In later books, you come back and it's like you just get more world building on Diagon Alley. Like, yeah. like it never stops. This is just like this is just the foundation mm -hmm. for everything. I think it's just genius the way J.K. Rowling wrote this because she gave away just enough. Like there's just enough world building where you're like, oh my gosh, what is this magical place? But then she doesn't give away everything to the point right. where you're like confused. Or exactly. It's just really, really well done. And this is where they go to Gringotts for they the first Gringotts. time. And this is also where we meet Draco for the first time. Look at this picture. It's a creepy he little child. A creepy child. Thought it was a snake. Wrong. Well, it's a tape measure. Yeah. Oh, he gets his oh, wand. Oh, he gets his wand. This we is a forgot big about moment. <laughs> we forgot about this. Yeah, all of Anders all like, ooh, of course it's this one. It oh yeah, so he says the phoenix is tail feather. It is very curious that you should be destined for the wand when its brother, why its brother gave you that scar. So we do find out that the brother is Voldemort's wand, which is oh, really oh, interesting. Oh, Setting up so much. Oh, Reading this first book after you've read like all of the books, all of the details, it's like a puzzle. It all comes together. Yeah, and it's so amazing to read the first one because you're like, she had to have had this literally all planned, planned out. out from book one. Right, and then and then you think when you get the second one, you also think they don't introduce Horcruxes until what six or the begin six or seven. Six. Six. Horcrux in the second book. Yeah. She's a certified genius. Chapter six. The journey from platform nine and three quarters. This is where we meet the greatest family in all of fictional history. The Weasleys! So exciting. I did not know until today that Charlie Weasley is not in the films. Yeah. I was like, he's in the films, and she's no, like, he's not. no, they're not. <laughs> he's not. He's in a picture. He's, he's in, in a film. He's in the picture where they're on Egypt, you know, having a good time. Yeah, but That's he's it. never he's represented on camera, which is like, Okay. Is that? I'm upset. It's yeah, fine. I don't know. The biggest thing for me is we establish Fred and George's comedy in this first chapter. I'm gonna cry already. You can't. Just... You can't cry. We're not to book seven oh, yet. I just love Fred. You're next, the plump woman said. I'm not Fred. I'm George, said the boy. Honestly, woman, call yourself our mother. mother. Can't you tell, tell I'm George? George? Sorry, George, dear. Only joking. I am Fred. And then he like runs. It's so good. Also, just like, I wonder how many people at King's Cross have actually just been by platform nine and three quarters and been like, I'm gonna run straight into this brick wall. This sounds like a good plan. I wonder if children have gotten concussions from trying. This. Probably. Yeah, we meet all of them and it's, is this also when we meet Hermione for the first time? I think it is. I'm sure once we're on the train, I'm sure we, that's when we meet Hermione. Yeah. Oh yeah, because oh, yeah, they talk about they talk about the uh, chocolate frogs and the Dumbledore card, and so we get a little mm -hmm. peek into Dumbledore. Yeah. We forgot to mention that we meet Scabbers. Right. We met Scabbers the rat, which is so important. You wouldn't think it would be important, but long later on. And then we meet Hermione. And then we meet Hermione. Our Hermione. favorite child. Where is she? Oh, has anyone seen a toad? Neville's lost one. She said she had a bossy sort of voice, lots of bushy brown hair, and rather large front teeth. Love. We all relate to her. All us nerds. Um, are you doing magic? Let's see it then. Oh, I'm Hermione Granger, by the way. Who are you? And she, and she said all this very fast, but like in the movie, it's that little Emma Watson, like, and you are. I love the memes where he's like, your husband. Your husband. It's the first time we get the three of them together, and it's such an interesting dynamic because they're so young. The Sorcerer's Stone, Philosopher's Stone, Potato, Potato. It's so innocent. And they're so young. And like, that's what, the, the magic is so magical, especially like if you read this as a kid, it's just like this beautiful world. And then it all goes downhill from there. But yeah. it's like, it's so beautiful and young and pure and they're friends. And friends, we made friends today. And this is just like the beginning of, if you think of like how far they go as a trio, this is just, it's just a moment where you're like, oh my God. Then we get to Hogwarts. Hogwarts. Chapter seven, the sorting hat. We decided we would tell you about what houses we're in. I am a Gryffindor first, and then like Ravenclaw is like the next most present, then Hufflepuff, and then I took a quiz that said I was 0% Slytherin, so 
sorry yeah. to all you Slytherins out there. And I am very similar to Devin. I am Gryffindor first, but Ravenclaw is a close like, second. Re yeah, really close Very, second. very close. And then third, I'm pretty sure I'm Hufflepuff, but I did also have Slytherin in me as well, and I'm pretty sure Slytherin and Hufflepuff were close together. So you're like two and two and two and two. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mine's very like top heavy. So this is also the chapter where we like really get to meet Professor McGonagall in her like professor role. But I can't wait till we get to book five and McGonagall we'll be, we'll turns be having into the sassy queen. I love it. It's gonna be so great. Truly. This is also the chapter where we meet all the ghosts. And it's, it's, it's another world building. Because until then we have, like, we may have heard whispers of like Gryffindor and like all that stuff. But like, we don't really know what that means. And then we we, we walk into the Great Hall for the first time to yeah. see all its glory. It's overwhelming almost in a way. Like yeah, we're overwhelmed is. with this like magical world. And I love the way that I mean, obviously we grow with the characters throughout the books. Right. And But like, she really does a great job of making us feel like freshmen, you know? Yeah, at Hogwarts. Ex exactly. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what's going on Much either. like them. And so we're like following them. Mm -hmm. And the more they know, and it's like when they start looking back and they're like, oh yeah, the first years. We're like, yeah, those yeah. first years, <laughs> yeah. they're the worst. Mm -hmm. And when, like, when you go to a new school, it, you get this exact feeling in the book. You're like, whoa, everything's so big and different and, and like and overwhelming. Crazy. And where am I going? And wow, the staircases move. I had that problem in high school. Oh yeah, totally. It was really tricky finding out how to walk through picture frames. Oh, I had yeah. problems Passwords? With that. God, I never yeah. remember them. Shh. Well, and then there's the whole long sorting hat speech. Mm -hmm. And which the whole really potential, great. which I think is great, mm -hmm. that Harry truly could have been a slave. Yeah, but I he, really like but that. But he didn't want to be. Yeah, he had the courage to ask to be in Gryffindor. To ask to be in Gryffindor. Which is which how is, he got there. Exactly. It's brilliant. And I think it's so cool that the sorting hat is like, it's all there inside your head, talking about Slytherin, and like, Horcrux, anyone? It's so great. <laughs> Thinking ahead. Planning ahead. It's I so see you, JK Rowling. This is also where we start to set up the whole things with Pearl and with the hatred that Snape has for Harry. Because remember, right. this is where this Harry is... like looks at Snape, Snape and his Snape scar is... burns. Right. But it's not but it's because, not because Snape it's is there, it's, it's because Quirrell is nearly headless. How can you be nearly headless? Like this. All right, yes. Yeah, so we meet the ghosts and Peeves, yes, because Peeves is a poltergeist, not a ghost. Yes. And he's yes. truly the trifecta with Ben Oh, that's for another book. That's we'll for another book. We'll, another get book. Back. we'll get back to you on that later. This is Dumbledore's really great speech. The speech where they go, yo, don't go to, the, what is it, third floor? Yeah, don't go to the third floor. floor. Don't go to the forbidden forest. forest. Don't go all the places that, lo and behold, within this book, they go. Chapter eight. The Potions Master. I have a lot of opinions on Snape. All right, let's get into them. Um, I really didn't like him for most of the book series. Like the way, the farther you get into it, I feel like the more you like him. I do. I know some people who truly hate Snape, and I know people who truly love Snape, which is you. I really, really love, Snape. love Snape. Yeah. I can't think of Snape without thinking of that one song from Secret Garden, the one called Lily's Eye, oh. <laughs> which makes me laugh. Cause, sorry, musical theater coming yep, out. Do it, Secret go Garden, ahead. the musical, has a song called Lily's Eyes, and there's two these two men singing because. Uh, Lily's daughter Mary has her eyes, but Mary and Harry rhyme. You might as well be like, he has her eyes, he has my Lily's, and in the musical it's Hazel, but like, <laughs> that's a pretty big plot point within Harry Potter is that he has his mom's eyes, and that's why Snape's like, right. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't like Snape at first, but it's all of the things that, like, in this first book, we think he's trying to kill Harry. Yeah. And when we find out that he's not, that like really gets to me. For some right, reason. right. Especially like, and we'll talk about this later. Like during Quidditch, mm -hmm. that's Quidditch, like yeah. an important plot point because you you wouldn't. He's you think he's a suspicious fellow, but yeah, but he's actually trying to save Harry in that particular you scene. You wouldn't think he was by the way he acts around Harry. Always. Right. But it's just like he, even though he hates Harry, he's still protecting him. And there's something about him being misunderstood that makes me feel for him. Yeah. And this is also the chapter where Hagrid starts like inviting Harry down to his hut, which is a big thing because that- Cause friendship. Back. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful friendship. This is kind of like first chapter, but Hagrid is the first person that he like carries Harry into the story. And then in the seventh book, he carries him again. 
like almost out it's of nice the story. Parallel. It's really cute. It's really sad. I love <laughs> it. But yeah, this is important to like their building their relationship. Yeah. Then... We've already kind of met Polver Neville a little bit, but we also feel very bad for Neville most of this book. Yes, it's true. He God bless Neville Longbottom. What would we do without him? Neville is one of my favorite Harry Potter characters. He really is. I think and that's that's funny. That's the kind of your Gryffindor that I think I am. <laughs> it's like I see it. Just like ah! like a little panicky, a little bit odd. You wouldn't think you wouldn't think that he'd be a Gryffindor. But here we are. Gringotts break in because we did, in fact, skip over, you know, most of the plot of the <laughs> Sorcerer's Stone, where Hagrid goes to get the thing and he's like, oh yeah, look it, I'm being sneaky. What is this? It won't help. Yeah. So we forgot that there's a plot. There is a plot. We're just getting excited. Don't you worry. Else. You'll have to read it yourself for the plot. This is also, I think, the chapter where we meet Mrs. Norris, Filch's cat, and I feel connected to her in the second book. You feel connected <laughs> to her? Like, I understand that stuff goes down, but you feel connected to her? <laughs> That's a lie. I feel really bad for Filch because There you go. There you go. Chapter 9, The Midnight Duel. It's not that I forget about this one. Yeah, this is not the chapter that, like, calls the most attention in no. my mind. I mean, Malfoy's just kind of a prick. Yeah, this is where we really start to despise Malfoy, I yeah. think. This is also the scene, the scene where they're learning to fly on brooms for the first time, which, which is, is really great. This is where we learn that Harry is a naturally incredible flyer, which is really cool. Thanks, Dad. And this is also uh, the chapter where I kind of fall in love with Professor McGonagall. Of course. Because she takes Harry away and you think he's gonna get in trouble and then she's like, I want you to be on the I Quidditch want you team. I want you to be on the Quidditch team. And we meet Oliver Wood. Mm -hmm. I guess the important thing about this chapter is that this is the first time they're like wandering the halls at night. Right. And this is where we get Hermione's whole thing like, Oh, was expelled! Oh, the other important thing about this is Neville. This is the one where he gets locked out of the Gryffindor Tower and he only gets in because they sneak out and then he like wakes up and he's like, thank goodness you found me. I've been out here for hours. I couldn't remember, remember the, the new password. password to get into bed. It's so cute. Chapter 10, Halloween. This is an important chapter. Yes. There is a troll in, in the, the dungeon. dungeon. Thanks. This is also the chapter where McGonagall gets Harry and the oh, yeah, that's, That happens first. That was another moment where I was like, oh my we're God, like, McGonagall. Yes. Yeah. I'm all about these like kind of mom-like figures in these books. Yes. Between Mrs. Weasley and Professor McGonagall. Oh. And this is where he like learns about Quidditch. About Quidditch. Time. Not to be confused with playing Quidditch for the first time. Yes. But he learns about Quidditch, which is just a cheap sport. It's I don't like so sports, good. but I would want to go to a Quidditch game. Yes. That sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. but, right? It does sound really fun. There was like a football game yesterday. <laughs> but if it were Quidditch, I would be there. It's true. Scarf and all. <laughs> the troll is the big thing, and Quirrell runs in and says, Troll in the dungeon! And, and then, then he passes out, and which is everyone, hilarious. And there's that moment of silence, and then everyone freaks out. And yeah. The movie, but like, yeah, and in, nice in, in the movie, Draco's face, when he freaks out, he's just like, it's so great. I love I know. it. But then we, lo and behold, find that it's not in the dungeon, right? Because it's in the bathroom. It Well, it was in the dungeon, and, and they it like, moved, comes it, up. Yeah, and Hermione, remember Hermione's crying in the bathroom because she overheard Ron talking bad things about her. This is really the first moment where anyone tries to like save someone. Like they put their life on the line to save Hermione. Yeah, they do. And they, then and then Hermione does something really out of character and- She throws herself under the bus. She yeah. says, it was me. I'm sorry, I went looking for the troll. Oh. Like she gets herself in trouble, which is like, worse than, what she said earlier is like worse than death for her. Yeah. To like get in trouble. She so doesn't like, like getting in trouble. Oh, not her. I just noticed that. So like the boys risk their lives and Hermione risks her academic career, which she stated before is worse than is death worse for than her. Death. So like, I just think that's so great. That's when they really bond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's their big moment. And just this, this is, book has a guide beautiful. to trolls, which I would just like to show you. I can't wait for that. Chapter 11, Quidditch! We are not sports people, but we would go see a Quidditch game. I would love a Quidditch game. I think the thing that I find really interesting about Quidditch is the snitch. Yeah. Because it's just like this weird rule that can like, that makes or breaks the game, basically. 
It does. It makes or breaks the game, and you you can still lose even if you catch the snake, mm -hmm. which I think is interesting. It, it just it's a game. It ends the game. So there's like all this strategy. Like if you're not ahead by enough points, if then you, you don't want to catch this. If you don't have enough points, points then you, you don't want to catch catch the snitch. Catch the snitch yeah. Um, what would what position would you play? I feel like I would be a keeper because I am not a very fast person, mm -hmm. and like I never played soccer, but I, I would have been a goalie. Yeah, I, I know what my head says, and I know what my heart says. My head says I would be a keeper because I, I when I played soccer, I was a goalie. Yeah, but. That sounds like fun. Ooh. Just like being like, yeah! If I could be anything, I'd want to be a seeker, I think. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Being seeker a seeker would be, be fun. fun. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not fast enough for that, so. The I mean, broom yeah. has to be fast. That's true. The broom is fast, not me. You're like running. <laughs> Everyone else is flying. You're just like <laughs> and then this is also the scene where um, Quirrell is trying to shake Harry off his broom. And everyone thinks it's Snape, but Snape is actually yeah. protecting. Can you imagine what a short book series that would be if he just fell off his room and died? <laughs> People would be like, be like oh, well that that's... is a weird standalone oh novel. <laughs> this is also when we have Jordan, the guy Lee who's, Jordan! The guy who's calling My the game. Heart. He keeps like hitting on the female players and the gonagle's like, Jordan! You can't do that, you're a school announcer! It's so funny. And then this is when Harry almost swallows Snitch. He catches yeah. it in his mouth. Yep. This, this is like a very iconic victory. Mm -hmm. It's truly. He's is. like, there it is. <laughs> he barks it up and then he's like, we won! We won! Chapter 12. The Mirror of Arison. I'm just gonna cry. <laughs> this is the big moment in this book where tears flow. If you're gonna cry in this you're book, gonna cry, this the is where of it is. Let's talk about what Harry sees in the mirror first. Yeah. So he sees his parents, of course, obviously. And he sees himself with, with his parents. His parents. And is this the first time he's ever seen his parents? Like, pictures of them? Because he didn't have any of the Dursleys. That's right, he didn't. But he gets them later! Because at some point he has like a scrapbook or a framed picture that moves. I don't maybe think he has this it This may yet. be the first time that he's like really seen his parents. And that's a lot. Yeah. If you're looking in a mirror, and that, like, that's a realistic mirror. Yeah, and like reading this, it's so interesting because you can see why he would just want to stay there forever and like just sit in front of the mirror forever. And you, you're like, yeah, me too. I'll sit with you in front of this mirror forever. And then Dumbledore comes in. It's like, like you can't, can't do stay that. here forever, which is really sad. And like, I, there's a lot of things like on Tumblr and on like the internet of like what other people would see. Which just, we were talking about this earlier, it just yeah. makes us sad. This is a spoiler for book seven, so sorry. Um, there's a great image, someone like illustrated it, and it's um, Teddy Lupin in front of the mirror of Arisette, and Tonks and Remus are in it, and it says, same mirror, different orphan, and I just sobbed. I sobbed like a baby. I sat there and I went. The one that gets me is, which also I'm just gonna cry, so go ahead. George Weasley is standing in front of the mirror of Arised and he sees himself, but his ear is still ear. there. So it's Fred! I can't, God. I love it. Here's the thing that I have a question about with the mirror of Arised. The Dumbledore says, I, I see myself holding a pair of thick woolen socks. See, I feel like there has to be some deeper meaning there and I don't know what it is. Why is that what makes him truly happy? Because there's a whole theory about Dumbledore being gay. Yeah, we can't get into that. That's a whole, that would have to be a whole video. <laughs> I mean, woman socks, like what could that be? Like he just likes being comfortable? He could be lying. Cause he, I'm oh, that's cause true. Because I'm surprised, because that, that seems like a quirky answer that Dumbledore would say, but what about his sister? I bet he is lying, and I think the reason why when I get to that point in this book, at this point in our relationship with Dumbledore, I don't think we believe he would lie, because he right. seems like this perfect, he's like, perfect god, person. he's like this god character. Yeah. But then, like, later we realize that he's flawed. He's flawed. Which and is he's genius, has... but we'll talk about that when we get to the Right, movie. exactly. And, like, I'm sure he doesn't lie to be, like, deceitful, but it's probably just like, well, like, maybe he just doesn't want to talk about it. Yeah, like, he's, there's no reason for him to open up to Harry. Right, exactly. So, that makes sense. Thank you for welcome. answering my question. This is also, Mirror of Air said it's also cha the chapter where we get the invisibility cloak. Yes, which it's is Christmas. very important. And that's, like, really his first 
real Christmas. Yeah. Which is like a beautiful He's like thing. so excited about getting presents when Ron is like, come open your presents. And Harry's, Harry's like, like, presents? presents? It's the first what? time he's ever gotten like real presents, which is so cute. Chapter 13. Nicholas Flamel. So one of our housemates, his name is Nick, and his Instagram handle is it's Nicholas, but it's it's Nicholas with an H. So it's N-I-C-H-O-L-A-S Flamel828. And he's he lives in this house with us. Yeah. He's our, like, he doesn't post like Harry, Harry Potter, Potter pictures. It's just he, he So just be clear about that. But if you want to go follow him, he's a lot of fun. Anyways. But yes, this is where the plot comes back into the story because we've been missing it for a minute. Yes. Um, <laughs> but so we learn about Nicholas Fumel. We learn kind of more about this idea of sorcerers, philosophers, stone, and all of that. And this also I feel like establishes like Hermione's like, I'm gonna go to the library and I'm gonna learn what this is about because mm -hmm. if it weren't for Hermione, Ron and Harry would just be goofing around. It's true. In the Great Hall, like throwing food at each other. This is when Neville, it says, at that point Neville toppled into the common room, how he managed to climb through as anyone's guess because his <laughs> legs were stuck together. Oh so yeah. Someone cursed him and so we felt like Neville's being bullied. Yeah, so Neville's being Neville. bullied and, by Malfoy. Right, and Ron is like, you've got to stand up to them, Neville, and he's not quite there yet. Quite Which to is that level. so, it's so interesting because he's a Gryffindor, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It makes very good character though. It does. I really love it. Yeah, that's another thing I do really love is that they Flamel. don't find Nicholas Flamel's name in a book. They like, right. remember it from, from the a card. card. And in that chapter also is when they find Snape and Quirrell talking in the hallway. Right. And they come up with this theory that um, Snape is, tra it is the philosopher. The philosopher's stone is in fact like hiding in with all the third floor where they're not supposed to go. Mm -hmm. And they determine that Snape is trying to force Quirrell to help him find it, right? Yes. Chapter 14, Norbert the Norwegian Ridgeback. Ooh, dragon! So this is where we learn more about Hagrid's obsession with magical creatures, which is fun. Specifically, he has a dragon egg that's kind of important because he traded the dragon egg for information about the three-headed dog. Mm -hmm. And we find out later that it was Quirrell. It's it's so interesting. I mean, we, we find more about like this uh, obsession with magical creatures and, and care for magical creatures later. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember this is the second book thing, and we'll get to it in the second book. But it relates back to Newt Scamander from Fantastic Beasts. Yeah, which I actually, also like, because in the second book, that's where Aragog is like, I came to Haggard in the pockets of a traveler. And that's... Mm-hmm. I'm really kind oh. of, I'm really hoping we get, we get like some Aragog in the, in the Fantastic Beasts series. I hope so too. Movies. I really hope. Oh, I hope we find out so where good. Aragog came from. Also, while you're talking about that, back in the Diagon Alley oh, it chapter, says, it says you have it to says, buy. It says you have to buy Fantastic, Fantastic Beasts and, and where to find, find them by Newt Scamander. Which fun fact, they actually have a book like that has information about beasts. I read it in like the second grade. I checked it out from the library. But yes, back to Norbert the Norwegian Ridgeback. Dragons. Yeah, so um, Hermione and Ron and Harry all go down to Hagrid's, Hagrid's hut and they like see that he has this egg and they're like worried about it. They're like, Hagrid, what are you doing? And Hagrid's got like these oven mitts because the egg's hot and then it hatches and they're all like freaked out. And this is also where um, Malfoy sees Malfoy is spying on them. Yeah, and Which Malfoy goes and tells. Like, we see like what Hagrid's hut is about. We meet Fay. Thanks a the lot. Best. It's nice. We also see a letter from Charlie Weasley, who, as we've learned, is not featured in the movies at all. Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> but he's the one who deals with all the magical creatures. So him and Hagrid are like, kind of like those. So then, then um, Malfoy and the three of them end up in detention. Yeah. I also love that Malfoy goes to McGonagall and- And he's and like, they were out after hours. And, and then she's like, like, detention for all of you. And he's, and like, he's what? like, what? And then McGonagall's like, well, you were also out after hours spying on them. And so. you're like, yes, McGonagall. Oh, McGonagall. oh God. Queen. Right? We Which leads her. us, I believe, directly into chapter 15. The Forbidden Forest. What a scary place. Yeah, the Forbidden Forest is but it's, terrifying. But it's beautiful during the day. Yeah. Like when they meet Buffy. Oh, yeah. And like when they have class out there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. We'll but don't go out there at night. This is where they have to go into the Forbidden Forest for their detention. Which I'm like, 
Why would Isn't they do that? Isn't that really dangerous? <laughs> it's very dangerous and I don't know why. I don't really understand do why that. that's their detention. But at least it's an important plot point. <laughs> yes, they needed to do it. Yep. And I guess they're with Hagrid, so I'm assuming that's why they think that they're going to be fine. Oh yeah, that's probably true. But there's a unicorn in this chapter. Mm -hmm. And there's also some unfortunate blood sucking in yes, this there chapter. Is. It's very frightening. Um, this is, I think, the darkest chapter we've stumbled upon. Oh, it is, yeah. This chapter's, like, scary. Yeah, honestly. especially if you're little lady. This, this is scary. Yeah, stuff. you're like, who's this guy? Weird this thing guy? in a black cape and sucking unicorn blood. blood. Here's a picture of the Forbidden Forest from this book with the unicorn. Yeah. Just beautiful. This is also where we get to see Malfoy is. He's just like... Wait, like, later on, I feel like he has a lot of character growth, but, like... Yeah. He's very scared. But and, I mean, he's and also that alive. actually, like, how the fact that he's a coward plays into his character development. Especially, later. yeah, book six. Yeah, yeah, by the time we hit book six, it's important. And I definitely want to talk about at some point, much later on, how I feel about Malfoy. Yeah. Yeah, the main plot point here is the unicorn and the blood and the scary and that. Uh, this is where we find out that Voldemort is back, basically. Yes, for the first back, time. Back, back, back. Yep. Yeah. Chapter 16. Through the trap door. This is when I feel like it goes really fast. No, oh yeah. This is like this is like leading right up to the climax. So they basically decide to break all the rules. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, we already got detention in the forest. Why not break some more rules? So they go to the third floor, whichever hallway I was speaking of. So they go to the place they're not supposed to go. Yep. Meet a big dog. There's already a heart, magical harp playing, mm -hmm. and then the magical harp stops playing, and, and the dog like, wakes up. The do dog with three heads. Yes, that's important. Important. <laughs> He's also giant. He's also huge. Yeah. But they jump down into the trapdoor. Yep. And then they get stuck they get in a lot of vines. Yeah. I can't remember the exact name of the um, plant. Oh, this is also when they sneak out <gasps> Neville. Neville! Yeah, this is so important. Neville tries to stop them, and then Hermione uh, does... Petrificus Totalis? Yes. Hermione does Petrificus Totalis. Totalis. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> Great thing. But he stood up to them, even though they were his friends. Yeah, and that, that comes back in the next chapter, and we'll talk about it. Um, so, they yeah. end up stuck in a bunch of vines. Devil's Snare. Devil's Snare. Yes, they get caught in Devil's Snare, and because Hermione... Hermione attention, and reads a lot. Yeah. Oh. Reads. <laughs> A lot. But yeah, she knows how to get them out of it so they, they don't die. They relax and they fall. Yep. And then they go to the keys, which are really fun. Mm -hmm. And because Harry's a good flyer, he catches the key. Yep. So, and so far we've used Hermione's skill and then Harry's, Harry's skill. skill. And then we get to chess, which we kind of glossed over before, but uh, Ron plays wizard's chess. Yes, he does. And um, so he uses his skills and also his bravery. Also his bravery. Also, just, that's the saddest part in the movie when, like, you just see him fall. And everyone's like, "Run!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next part they skip in the film. The next thing that happens is there's a purple fire. Yes. And Hermione and Harry, that they have to like drink something to be able to like pass through it. Mm -hmm. But there's only enough for like one of them. Yeah. And don't all of them use their skills for that one? Well, Hermione, because Ron's still back there. So Ron's Hermione and Harry. Hermione and Harry determine. They figure out is. between them which one is the best, which one is going to save them. Right, and they determine like who's going forward, which obviously is Harry and Harry Astrid. says, Harry. well, I survived him once before, didn't I? And I'm like, that's not a good basis for which you should go no, in. You were also a baby. You're so a baby. You don't know what you did. Chapter 17. The man with two faces. This is the chapter in which, spoiler alert, we discovered that Coral, in fact, has Voldemort on, on the, the back, back of his head. head. Which is just like, how did you even think of that? I love it. It's, it's so great. bizarre. And he, he has his turban. We haven't questioned the turban like the whole time because like everyone in the Wizarding World has cool hats. Yeah, duh. So, but he's just like, well, here he is. <laughs> that like is such a freaky moment where he turns around and you're like, excuse me? He's like, oh. <laughs> Oh, oh God, Yeah. wow. And also, I, it's great that the Mirror of Erised comes back here, and it's how you get the Sorcerer's Stone, because you, you cannot want to use it. You just have to you see have yourself like taking it, taking but not it. to use. Right. Which is really great, and it's that's brilliant. why Harry it's can get it. brilliant, and that's why, and that's, this is also the whole thing of like, 
Isn't this one of those ones where he's like, I have something you don't have. Love. Yeah. Or whatever. And you're just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah like 11 like, year old Harry really knew what was going on. Yeah, it's really great. And this is also, I think the freakiest part of this is when Quirrell touches Harry and starts to like melt. And you're like, what the? <laughs> Acting. <laughs> great. In my degree. <laughs> Yeah, it's scary. I mm, yeah, it's like really disturbing. This is the part of the book where I go, wow, this is a joke in the book. This is a little dark. Makes the stakes really high. Ooh, this picture is so creepy. Oh, it's with the turban and the eye, and it's so hot. Horrifying, man. I hate that. Then that's everything starts moving pretty fast after that. Because Harry, Harry is just figuring things out left and right, and eventually he gets out and he wakes up in the hospital wing. That's true. Yeah. And didn't um, everyone get, leave some candy, don't they? Right? Or is candy, that? Because candy, an 11 year old loves candy. It's true. It's like a lot of the jelly beans, the weird flavored jelly beans. Yeah. Like. And then Dumbledore comes in and talks to him. Oh, yeah, and he goes like, mm, earwax or something like <laughs> yeah. that. I can't remember. That's just such a distinct yeah. thing. It all starts revving up. And it, I think it's interesting that there's not like a separate chapter, that it's not the man with two faces and then like. Yeah, there's no the like end of the year. No, it's the yeah. man with two faces covers from like that straight to the end. Yeah, which is an interesting choice. I don't know. Which means a lot happened. Well, it's the end of the year, the house cup, and it looks like I believe it looks like Slytherin's gonna win. Mm -hmm. And then Dumbledore said, "You thought." Oh, and look at this. Okay, so the the spots are green, and then the spots. Oh, are and then red. the spots change. So they're green before Dumbledore like does his whole thing about changing the points, and then. And then they turn red and yellow. Red Isn't and yellow. Isn't that cool? Which is cool. But might I mention the most important reason why it changed is because he respects Neville. He says, There are all kinds of courage, said Dumbledore, smiling. It takes a great deal of bravery to stand up to our enemies, but just as much to stand up to our friends. I therefore award 10 points to Mr. Neville Longbottom. And that's like, what tips it. That's it's what so changes the entire thing. And, oh. then, and then the, the school year kind of up. Yeah, then the school year ends and Harry learns he has to go back to Privet Drive. So Harry's back to being just a random boy. Yeah, and like after such a magical school year, it's so sad that he has to go back to this life of sadness. And the last line of the book is, I'm going to have a lot of fun with Dudley this summer. In terms of the series, yes. where would you rank this book? See, I... I don't know. I think this book holds a really special place in my heart. Like because it's, it's the almost first. like separate. Yeah. I, yeah, because I know we'll talk more about favorites, I assume, later in yeah, the series. I'm sure we will. But, but this is not my favorite. It's not my least favorite either. I don't. I just think. no. I don't think it's my least favorite because this there's just something really special about it because it's the first it's book the first and all book. the world building happens mm -hmm. and you can't you just can't not like it because of that. That's true. And I mean it's also so hard to say I have a least favorite Harry Potter book because I love them all. You know. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this really long video about Harry Potter. I hope that you're excited to hear about the next six books because we're really excited. We're excited to, to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. So if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave comments down below about your favorite parts of the first book. And please subscribe and come back for the next video in the series. Bye!